Welcome everybody to VM Blogs 2021 Mega Series event. And today we're joined by a familiar face and friend, Jason Smith, the VP of Product Marketing at Liquidware. Jason, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm glad to be back with you guys. Thanks for having us. Welcome. Yeah. Um, maybe we can start by, you know, a lot of people already know who Liquidware is, um, but, you know, give us a just a short background of the company and what Liquidware looks like in 2021. Thanks. Well, you know, when we do these video opportunities, we, we run upstairs and comb our hair these days since we're all working from anywhere, right? <laughs> I thought I'd throw on a shirt and I, I said, well, I'll pick this throwback shirt. Uh, this is our original logo and company name, Liquidware Labs. Of course, several years ago, we dropped the labs, but we've been around this month, 12 years, and that's what got me thinking about it. And that's why I picked out uh, a little bit of a throwback shirt. Uh, Liquidware was always designed as an organization to help organizations get to their next generation desktop. And in 2009, that meant the emergence of, of virtual desktop infrastructure, VDI, especially from VMware as they started to challenge Citrix and the way things had been done for so long. And then Citrix also that same year had and previous had jumped into the virtual desktop in addition to what they had for ZenApp. And the story is the same. We help Citrix and VMware uh, customers through our partners go to their next desktop. And we do that through assessing for uh, the desktops to see what they have in use and how users are using those desktops. And we do that with our migration. So there's the migration phase that you'd naturally go through. Sometimes that means you're switching operating system. Most of the time it means you're switching operating system versions and you're going to a new platform, uh, sometimes in virtual desktop infrastructure, but you may be putting users and, and power users back onto a physical desktop. And that's good too. We work in that scenario and then delivering applications as well. Um, so helping deliver the application seamlessly to the desktop through context aware settings, whether you're doing that through MSIX or through our flex app technology, layering that application dynamically, just in time at login or an, another point during the session, that's what our solution does end to end. And so it's stratosphere UX user experience that helps, you know, and manage that process along the way for user experience. It's monitoring diagnostics and, and profile unity, the user environment management, which goes with the user. It gives you a persistent user experience, even in a non-persistent desktop. And then flex app layering, delivering those applications just in time to those users by user and group or time of day, however you want to get them there. So that's our innovative suite in a nutshell. And that's what we still do today. And it became even more readily apparent as organizations were sending users to work from home, how quickly sometimes you may need to move to that next desktop. Um, some users went straight to VDI uh, last year. We saw it and we helped many of our many of our existing customers burst scale to more users, but then many net new customers so they could have business continuity. So that's Liquidware in a nutshell. And, and Jason, so obviously we're here to, today together uh, as part of this new mega series to talk about the world of end user computing. So how do you define it and maybe talk about some of the benefits that people should be aware of? Thanks, that's a, that's a great question because end user computing is, is now more of a gray space than ever. But um, what it really means to us at Liquidware is that you're delivering a workspace just in time for your users uh, that, that allows them to keep the, their level of productivity high, no matter the situation. And that could mean a, a, a work from home user using their personal computer, our child's <laughs> a repurposed computer, as we saw many organizations do last year, just to be able to access, uh, access some apps or some SaaS apps, uh, as we're done at SaaS apps, but software as a service uh, productivity apps. So that could be in user computing. Um, there are various models across the board, but what we've seen emerge even through the 2000s and 2015s uh, teens and now into the 20s is that Windows continues to be the tie that binds organizations. So it's the it's uh, for virtual desktops, which are the easiest accessible desktop for most organizations. They're powered by Windows in most cases to get to those applications. So end user computing can mean many things, but in its most solid form, 
and reliable format. It continues to be Windows and, and increasingly so, not only physical desktops, but Windows virtualized as well. And that's where you have Citrix and VMware as big leaders in that space, Amazon, and now Nutanix is emerging as challengers in that space. So there's a lot of innovation happening there. And, um, and end user computing has matured um, in some ways far faster than we ever imagined for cloud resources. And in other ways, I believe we all scratch our head and, and, and at times wonder um, why and how we still use computers the way that we do. But end user computing definitely here to stay and we're here as an organization to help make those transitions as seamless as possible. Well, continuing along those lines, um, what are some of the trends that you're seeing you know, this year and in the coming years uh, in the current EUC market? Yeah, great, great, uh, great question. <clears throat> A lot of people had counted Citrix down and out about a year ago, uh, a year and, and three months ago. And, and if you look back historically, you'll see where they were spinning off business units and uh, streamlining, going back to their basics. One of those business units they spun off was, uh, was GoToMeeting. <laughs> just, just what, months or a year before, uh, GoToMeeting probably had a spike along with, uh, w along with Zoom and, and several others of those. So we're seeing them look, uh, the leader in this space for end user computing, we're seeing them look to new horizons, uh, tongue in cheek, uh, pun intended a little bit, but uh, their, their acquisition of Reich, for example, was uh, earlier this year. One, it is to date the, the biggest acquisition, acquisition that we've seen in the industry uh, this year is all about helping keep that user productivity high. And, and as we all saw um, a year ago, a year and a month ago or so, that became the number one thing for IT organizations across the world is to make sure their end user productivity is kept high. Business continuity needs to uh, be solid. You, you need to have a great plan. We saw many organizations struggle to put together a good plan last year just to keep that, um, just to keep their organization moving. Some people were sent home for as much as a month or two before they even had a desktop that they could log on to officially to get back. So even large organizations where you had uh, office workers traditionally that you wouldn't think would have uh, been out of work temporarily because of the COVID pandemic, that was happening. So they threw together a plan quite quick, quickly but now, now what we're seeing is a trend is many of those organizations are circling back to see, did they make the right decisions at the time? Now that we see that work from anywhere is a methodology that is here to stay for many organizations. We're not gonna go back all the way back, I believe, to an office setting for everyone. Many people will go and have gone back to an office now that we're past some of the worst part of the pandemic as it seems, but Many organizations saw cost savings as well um, with office leases coming up and, 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 and expiring and deciding many more users could work from home. So as they circle back, they're looking for you know, new innovative technologies, new, uh, ways that they can deliver those desktops cost effectively and to where they're always on. So I believe that you will still will will we'll see a uh, will continue to see an uptick in cloud-based computing, uh, cloud-hosted computing, I should say, through technologies like Microsoft WVD, or just using some of your entitlements of WVD and hosting uh, environments like Citrix or VMware Horizon uh, on on the cloud. In this case, to leverage that, you would you would be on Azure, uh, but also cloud-hosted desktops on Amazon will continue to grow, uh, we believe, and also Nutanix Zyframe will continue to grow as a challenging platform, as a challenger to those platforms. And uh, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit already, but twenty uh, twenty is that uh, the year that we're all trying to forget uh, with the pandemic. Uh, it obviously, as we talked, has affected the EUC industry. Do you see um, end user computing solutions becoming easier to consume? Uh, you, you talked about work from anywhere, uh, that's gonna continue to grow. So uh, do you see these things becoming easier to use for folks? 
Yes, easier to use and also easier for organizations to choose uh, the desktop that they want to host in the cloud and the level of desktop. And, and so we're working with several WVD, Windows Virtual Desktops projects right now with Microsoft. And by the way, we've, we've uh, negotiated uh, licenses for people to help them get started as, the, as a partner, a premier partner in the Azure Migrate program. So in these projects, we, we're seeing many organizations, they, they look at their usage and they don't want to necessarily waste any resources because you want to have your biggest return on investment when you choose the way that you, um, that you have your users um, turn to workspaces in the club. So we can tightly measure and we have uh, and assess desktops for WVD or for hosted desktops on Azure, like Citrix on Azure. Um, the types of desktops that those users will require based on how they've used their desktops historically. And we'll see, and we'll look at the capacity of those and say, do, do you need uh, you know, 2000 desktops at this level of compute 100% um, of the time, or do you only need that a fraction of the time? So um, when, you, when that happens, you can pay for just the computing resources that you need in the cloud. So, as work from home and, and work from anywhere continues to evolve, we see organizations getting smarter about the choices that they've made. And they can also start to see return on their investment if they go back and circle back and um, make sure that they're doing things in the best and most cost effective way possible while ensuring that that nonstop desktop is always available when the user needs it for user productivity. Now we, we always say this, and it's kind of funny, you know, we've been saying it now over 10 years, you know, is this the year of VDI? Um, with the things that you see happening where we're moving from work to, from home and, you know, it's, it's creating an increased need for VDI. Do you think uh, VDI is dead or is it still evolving? And at, how is it in comparison to other competing technologies? All right, I'll, I will go on record and I'll say personally, not on behalf of Liquidware, but 2020 uh, was the year of VDI. Does that mean we've peaked? No, but that was the year that it became widely accepted that this was an easy way of doing business when you need to spin up desktops and burst scale. Um, so it became very legitimate for organizations that may have kicked the tires for it before and had, 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 uh, overlooked it in, in favor of just staying on physical desktops or, or, um, or just VDI for a specific use case. Um, I, was as a, I was at a Citrix user group when the pandemic and, and lockdown started in, in, um, in, in Birmingham last March. And in real time, we had a subject for the day for that Citrix user group, and I don't even remember what it was, but it changed. The subject became the crisis of the moment. We had hospitals in that user group and we had financial institutions in that user group and all of them had a challenge that they needed to face within the coming days of sending a user to work from home. And every one of them were looking to VDI and I'm including cloud hosted desktops in that to solve this need. And uh, budgets that had not been freed up before automatically became available. So I do believe that 2020 was the year of VDI, and it will continue. Um, and yeah, tongue in cheek, it, we always said, "Is this the year of VDI?" But it it, it was the I believe that we'll look in retrospect that the pandemic uh, really legitimized the entire industry. I mean, we already had significant growth, but it was slow and methodical. But last year we saw a spike and work from anywhere is here to stay, as I said earlier, and that's going to continue the momentum and that's in this space. So we talked uh, a bit about VDI and, <clears throat> and WVD and Amazon. Uh, you know, we traditionally, and when we think of end user computing, it's for years, it's been dominated by on-premises solutions. Uh, I know you touched on this already, but maybe you can dive in a little bit deeper and talk about how the cloud itself has reshaped EUC. The, the thing about cloud is that um, even organizations that said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna host my desktops in the cloud, if you pin them down today, 
and you ask them, unless they're in a highly uh, secure and compliant industry where nothing can be hosted on cloud, if you pin them down today and even last year, even two years ago, you would see that indeed most of them have moved a significant portion of their end user computing to cloud. Whether that is simply using Dropbox for user authored storage, OneDrive, of course, Amazon WorkDocs are fully hosting desktops in the cloud. They have moved their end user computing to the cloud. Uh, you can't even you have a sales organization today without leveraging something like salesforce.com. It's in the cloud. So the cloud has slowly reshaped this entire industry. Um, and we're, what, we're, what we're seeing now is that desktops that move everything to the cloud, everything but the endpoint, which is impossible to do, right? Because you still need something to log on to. But even in those cases, you have the endpoints managed from the cloud. So the, the, what had been hesitant for many organizations to adopt uh, became almost seamlessly that they were adopting it and they were in the cloud before they indeed knew it. So it makes for the full adoption even easier. Now, why don't we uh, jump back to your products specifically? Um, how are you different from your competitors? And what would you say someone would prefer your offerings over somebody else in the industry? You know, what's that determining factor? Yeah, it's uh, we're in a new we're in a very unique spot uh, as a vendor in in this industry. If you look at what we do, monitoring and diagnostics, user environment management and application layering, you can look to the leaders of Citrix and VMware who also have tools, and I call them tools appropriately, I believe, in these areas that cover some basic use cases. Um, but you have to choose usually their enterprise or platinum stacks to get all the benefits of those. And, and at that, you're siloed. Everything for your user environment management stays within your platform stack. Um, just as an example, your monitoring is more or less designed for that stack, not your other Windows desktops across the board. We see enterprises that run VMware desktops, Amazon desktops, Citrix desktops, and in the pandemic, they would burst scale sometimes to something like Amazon workspaces. Um, but yet for their main use cases, they had long adopted Citrix. So everyone's got a mixture of these desktops. Our features and benefits, so, so I, I say we're in a unique position because we really compete uh, against these platform leaders, but we're also verified partners because their use cases for VMware and Citrix, just as an example, go uh, for, for their enterprise use cases go far beyond what some of their included tools are designed for. And that's the gap that we feel. So if we have a, com a main competitor, it tends to be our most valued partners. So it's a tricky walk to walk, but we help organizations adopt more Citrix desktops, more VMware desktops. We are indeed a great partner uh, with them, an alliance partner with them at the end of the day and Amazon and so forth. Um, so it's proving our worth above and beyond those basic tools that might be included with that top stack that you're in. You may not need the top stack because some of those top stacks mainly only include things that overlap with us. So many organizations might choose standard or advanced stacks. I'm calling those generically across the board and then choose what we believe is the best feature benefit full from an innovator in adaptive workspace management. As a matter of fact, the only vendor that provides adaptive workspace management across every way that you can have a Windows desktop. So now if you decide that um, a cloud-based desktop from a different vendor is the better use case for your users, you can simply have them log off and log on and you have zero downtime. That's not possible with the tools that work in one silo. So our adaptive workspace management bridges all of your desktops, keeps that business continuity going, has disaster recovery built in. So at a moment's notice, like we saw last year during the pandemic or when you're changing operating systems, that user can log off of one platform and on to the next and stay productive. And we saw this in real time last year. Um, many of our customers sent people home on a Friday, told them to log on on a Monday, 
and they had zero downtime. Those organizations stayed open. They were fully prepared. And that's the, that's the, the sort of features and functionality you get when you choose the leader in adaptive workspace management, Liquidware. And not to uh, put you on the spot, but uh, you talked a little bit about some of the trends earlier uh, in this conversation. Uh, what does uh, the future look like? What does the future hold for Liquidware and maybe the EUC market? Right, that, that that's a good one, and you know we we work on those predictions columns uh, that we work to 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 put out at the end of the year. So here we are in the fourth month of 2021, and we said work from anywhere is here to stay. I believe that 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 continues on, and we we've already said that. I believe that Windows will continue to be the tie that binds far far into the future, well beyond what any of us had expected. I think if you asked us back in 2009, any, any, the three of us here on this, um, we would have said, you know, Windows is going to become a lot less significant in 2020, 2021, <laughs> but yeah. it, it continues to be the important tie that binds. And I think we're all surprised at how Microsoft has kept up with that space, how they've also adopted the cloud and they've leapfrogged some competitors that were starting to host desktops in the cloud with their WVD offerings, or at least the buzz around it. And then with the support of Citrix and others. So um, more and more organizations will tend to adopt cloud as we go forward, whether it be Azure, or Amazon or Google for resources and the flexibility will continue and the cost per desktop will continue to drop for hosting, I believe, and, uh, or in, and for storage cost. Now, Jason, before we let you go, um, we're hoping maybe we could give us kind of a quick demo of your solutions and uh, Sure. Yeah. One of the most exciting things that we have going on that we've done here recently is our work with Stratosphere. And we have significant updates for all of our product lines that will be out a little later this year. But with the time available, I figured I would give you um, a look at how we have uh, leveraged Stratosphere to put metrics directly into a well-known third-party vendor for trouble tickets and, and help desk support service now. So let's show some of those reports right now, how you get this data in there. So here we have a service now management console for an organization. And, a joint, and many of our joint customers have ServiceNow and they have Stratosphere. If they want to have a single view, a single pane of glass to help their uh, trouble ticket and help desk support teams, you can now get data directly into ServiceNow. And that's it, uh, from Stratosphere directly into, into ServiceNow. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Someone has called the help desk, for example, and we brought up their machine. And we can see exactly how it's configured, uh, what the hardware resources are on it. And so this is a specific view that we have in here. And I'll show you a few more of them in, in a moment. But what we've done is we've developed a plugin for ServiceNow. Now, and, and if you're a ServiceNow customer, go right over to the ServiceNow store and look up Liquidware. And you'll see our listing in there for our plugin. Using this plugin, you can integrate the two systems uh, together and have this single pane of glass. You still need to look at Stratosphere for the reports that you want to serve up in here. But once that's done through your value added partner, <clears throat> you get machine views and also usage views like this. You can see at a glance this this uh, particular ServiceNow customer that also had Stratosphere wanted to see at a glance how many users are logged down on their system, how many open problems are there, are there any issues with their VoIP systems. This is a customized view in here. So the level of integration that we offer for ServiceNow is just a taste of what we're doing across many solutions in the industry. You can also use our API. It's very intuitive to be able to feed Stratosphere data into a variety of solutions like Remedy IT and also like reporting solutions like Power BI from Microsoft to give you different views, maybe geo regions or correlate those with maps. So this is some of the more exciting work that we've been doing lately and customers are really enjoying this single pane of glass that brings all of their systems together and allows them to see this rich Stratosphere data within solutions like ServiceNow. Well, thanks for that uh, quick demo, Jason. Uh, where can people go if they want to find out more information about Liquidware and some of the things you've talked about? Sure. 
liquidware.com is our obvious URL, but also on there, the download tab, all these solutions, you can register for a quick evaluation version. We include licenses that will get you started. There's going to be no waiting for a sales rep to contact. You can literally download and start to install any of these solutions. Uh, any of the three take only about an hour to get them up and running to start your proof of concept. So that's one way you can easily get started. We also have a community site. You can find that by searching liquidware and community, and you can get a feel for what some of our customers are doing and how they're using our solutions. And you can use that as another help, uh, help and support mechanism in addition to our award-winning tech support that we offer. Well, thanks for being part of our uh, mega series and uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks for having me. I really love what you guys are doing with this mega series, especially in the absence of getting to see each other in person. So thanks again. Absolutely. Looking forward to seeing you in person at some point. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from our cloud technology partners, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get notified next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Very important.